Don't change the channel. Don't you touch that channel. Uh, don't change the channel. Dr. Maria will be preaching the God. Don't change the channel. All your family and your friends. Don't change the channel. Shekinah's home right now. It begins. Uh, with open faces. We behold. We behold his glory. Don't change the channel. Don't you touch that channel. Uh, don't change the channel. Dr. Maria will be preaching the God. Don't change the channel. All your family and your friends. Don't change the channel. Shekinah's home right now. It begins. Uh, with open faces. We behold. We behold his glory. St. Mark 15, and I want to read verse 39. St. Mark 15, and I want to read verse 39. Here beginneth the reading of God's holy word. When the centurion, which stood over against him, saw that he cried out and gave up the ghost, he said, truly, this man was the son of God. The word of the Lord for the people of God. Today, I want to minister to you from the sermon topic, Jesus, he became nothing to become our everything. Jesus, he became nothing to become our everything. I begin. When you have nothing, you have nothing to work with. When you have nothing, you are depending on the next person to give you something. When you have nothing, you wonder where your next supply of something is coming from. To begin this Good Friday sermon, I want to take you to a scripture that lets us know that Jesus had everything. That Jesus was everything. Turn with me to Philippians 2, 6 through 9. Philippians 2, 6 through 9. It reads, who being in the form of God, <laughs> thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Jesus was equal with God, and yet in being equal, Jesus chose to subtract his divinity, add on humanity's sorrow, 
divide the demonic powers of Satan asunder in order to multiply salvation to you and to me. I hope you got it. I hope you got it. I think I better, I, I think I better give it to you again. Listen, listen here. Jesus was equal with God, and yet in being equal, Jesus chose to subtract his divinity, add on humanity's sorrow, divide the demonic powers of Satan asunder in order to multiply salvation unto you and unto me. Jesus became nothing, stepping out of glory to live amongst humanity. Jesus became nothing, left his reputation behind to become a man that was not respected amongst his own Galilean people. Jesus became nothing. Jesus, who ought to be worshipped for all of his glory, chose to empty himself of that glory and become humbled. He humbled himself. Jesus became nothing. He, he left heaven as the crown of glory uh, to head towards a hill called Calvary where he would wear a crown of thorns. Jesus became nothing. He left eternity to live, to die for you and for me. No wonder God gave him a name higher than every other name. No wonder that one day in the future every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that name called Jesus. Listen, listen, listen. He, he took off his glory label and took on a glory label. He stepped out of heaven to step down onto earth. He disrobed himself of heavenly aura in order to put on the faulty robe of human flesh. He shook off eternity to shake the world and shape its destiny. I'm trying to tell you about our Jesus. I'm trying to tell you what he did for you and for me. And so today, today, travel with me to the Good Friday that actually became good after it was emptied of goodness. All of this so that you and I could empty ourselves of our wrongs to embrace the righteousness of Jesus. Choose a lifestyle that follows the life of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So let's see how Jesus became nothing <laughs> to become our everything as we deal with the following three points. Point number one, nothing helps. Nothing helps. Point number two, nothing heals. Nothing heals. And point number three, nothing hails. Nothing hails. So let's deal with it. Point number one, nothing helps. Nothing helps. So Jesus has been to the court and Jesus has experienced what we call a kangaroo court in which he has been found guilty of being, watch this, who they said he was. He's been found guilty of being in agreement with who they knew he was. Uh, his own people, the Jews, chose to release a hardened prisoner and remand him a gentle savior. Come on now. Church, all he did was heal the sick, raise the dead, cause blind to see. Yet they refused to see him as anything but a poor man from the hills of a back of town place called Galilee. Well, can I celebrate something right now? Uh, that you don't have to be born in fairy lands. Uh, you don't have to reside in Tucker's town. Uh, you don't have to live in the most glorious estates in Bermuda. All you've got to do is live on the right side of history, the right side of eternity, and know Jesus Christ for yourself. And you may think 
Some may think and call that what? You live in a place that's not as glorious and glamorous as theirs. But I'm telling you that when we live knowing Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we live in the best place possible. So listen, because Jesus had not come like everything they wanted, they considered him nothing. He, he didn't give them the royalty. He didn't give them the big win. He didn't beat up the government. He didn't do what they wanted to do. So instead of him being acknowledged as everything, he was nothing. That's how they were able to give him up. How you how you talk about exchanging Jesus for Barabbas? A spoiled people. When, when, when Jesus don't give you everything, all of a sudden he's nothing. Mindset sounds familiar today? So listen here. They wanted a hero. He became a zero. They wanted a fighter. He was the founder of peace. Be still. They wanted a king. He was a servant to the people. They wanted Jesus to fight their cause. Instead, he refused to fight because of his cause. He knew why he had come to earth. Huh? No one was going <laughs> to subtract his, his mission. No one was going to derail him, huh? No one was going to take him off track. He knew why he came, and he was staying focused. He was staying on point no matter what. Jesus became as nothing to become our everything. Now, on a path towards the ultimate place of nothing, this is where we begin today. This is where we begin. Verse 21. And they compel one Simon, a Cyrenian, who passed by, <laughs> coming out of the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to bear his cross. Compel comes from the word agario, and it means to employ, like a courier. He was the um, original DHL. Yeah, he, he was the original FedEx. Mm -hmm. they, they, it, it means to dispatch, dispatch a mounted messenger, press into public service. That's what it means. And so listen, listen, a stranger to the followers of Jesus, don't miss this. This man is a stranger to the followers of Jesus, a nobody. That is, a nobody who will carry the cross for the one who will die for everybody. He, in other words, to, to carry the gospel message, to be chosen by God to speak his word, to do ministry in the kingdom, you don't need a famous name for that. You don't need to be known by people. All you got to do is be minding your own business, living every day like every day, and somewhere along the way, he will pull you into service. Do I have a witness about that? Glory to God, glory to God. Just be yourself. Don't try to be anybody else. Don't try to be highfalutin. Don't try to make yourself a re of a reputation. Just be yourself, and God will use you. Yes, he will. His name was Simon. And they also <laughs> give the names of his sons. It is thought in study that this man was a black man. Follow me. Might I say that this fact would have resulted in him Watch this, being used and then forgotten. And help somebody right here. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. In study, they say he was a black man. And this fact would have resulted in him being used and forgotten. <laughs> yet, Lord have mercy, somebody say yet. <laughs> yet they give us the names of his sons. There are some questions as to why his sons were named. Could it be, church, that much like what happens even today, that if they do not correctly and specifically identify the right Simon, the right Simon, that this black man might have been forgotten over time or his fame would have been given to another Simon? Lord have mercy. Can you see 
When you step into a scene of such significance, no plan of your own, and you are used in a significant way that there is the risk mm, that others will want to rewrite history and erase you out of the history book. However, however, this nothing of a man is given prominence and is validated <laughs> by stating exactly who he is. He is the father of Alexander and Rufus. So this man, he's validated. Simon is validated so that you won't get mixed up on which Simons? Who is Simon? Where's Simon from? Well, it's the Simon who has two sons, and their names are Alexander and Rufus. So that's Alex's daddy. That's Rufus' daddy. So don't get it twisted. Don't try to make it another Simon. This is the Simon with these two sons. He may mean nothing to you today, but in time, his act of carrying the cross of the Savior will catapult him to having a special place in the history work of redemption and salvation of Jesus. And that blows my mind that a nobody, a man minding his own business, not famous, not been schooled, not been mentioned before, he now receives an, an eternal mention in the word of God because he did something that no one else was able to do. Come on up in here. So be confident, church, that when you may be a nothing or a nobody <laughs> to others, that God can step in and use your life to bless the kingdom. So you can't get distracted about who is for me, who is against me, who likes me, who can't stand me, who's got an attitude. All you've got to do is live your life. Do you. Hey, that's probably the original. Hey, just do you, Simon. Just do you, man. And God will step in and use your life for his glory. That's why you don't strive to be the bishop. You don't strive to be the pastor. You don't strive for position. You recognize that as long as you are humbled, that God in due season, he will exalt you and use you for his glory. Yes, he will. And church, that takes me to point number two. Nothing hill. Nothing hill. Verse 22. And they bring him unto the place Golgotha, which is being interpreted, the place of a skull. All right. It was a nothing hill. To look at Golgotha, it was the place of the skull. Listen, not the place of the head. I'm going to take my time right here. I'm going to take my time. It was the place of the skull, not the place of the head. You see, the head would indicate blood, arteries, and veins, and your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your ears, your hair. <laughs> a skull, this skull on its own, watch this, is void of life, no life. In other words, it's nothing. That's what I'm trying to tell you. That Golgotha is a nothing hill. There's no life there. There's no hope there. Isn't it an awesome thing? That, that the specific hill where our Lord and Savior was to give his all was a place that was totally empty. That tells me something that if we are ever to give our all to the kingdom, that we have got to be a skull. We have got to be empty of ourselves. Jesus. So let's talk about this place, Golgotha, a skull. This skull, as I said, on its own, was void of life. It's nothing. The skull, void of life, would be the place where Jesus would lose his own life. This place of nothing would see Jesus Christ give his everything for you and me. 
You, you got to see it. He's walking. He's, he's climbing the hill. And he's going to the nothing place to give every being for you and for me. You wonder why I love him so much? You wonder why I serve him with all that I am? You wonder why all of my energy is into doing as much as I can for the kingdom? I do it because he, he, he bore a weight for me. He bore my every sin, my every way I am, my every idiosyncrasy, my ever strange ways, come on, my ever attitude. He, he bore it all at the cross. Golgotha, the place of the skull. In this nothing hill, this skull hill, Jesus would become nothing so that you and I could become everything. My, my, my. In this nothing hill, this skull hill, Jesus would be treated as trash, like nothing, so that you and I could walk on this earth as precious treasure fulfilling the purpose and destiny that God has for us. You know, so, so what if somebody trashes you? What if somebody calls you out of your name? Well, they didn't die on the cross for you or for me. So immediately it's nullified what they said because Jesus already did it all on the cross called Calvary. Glory to God. And so on this nothing hill, in this nothing hill, the skull hill, they would treat Jesus as an enemy so that today we could call Jesus our friend. How about that? How about, you know, we love singing, I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Well, do you realize what your friend went through? Don't you understand why we? should lay down our sins, lay down our burdens, why we should worship, why we should praise, magnify God, because he did it all. And now we get to call him friend. How about that? Instead of Maria being nailed to a cross, being crucified, condemned to hell, no, he took it all for you. He took it all for me. How, how about that? My God, my God, Jesus. Church, I have a question for you. Can you stand in a nothing place and become nothing so that those who look upon you can yet receive from you for the present time and for the time to come. That's a heavy statement because, you know, we operate in feelings. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the, the, the errors, you know, oh, they hurt my feelings. Oh, they looked at me. Oh, they took my seat. Oh, they, this, that, and the other. Yet, when we get it that we if we follow Jesus, become as nothing. Take up your cross and be a witness of the kingdom. So, can you give when they consider you nothing? Can you forgive when they consider you nothing? Simply put, can you climb your own Golgotha's hill? Can you handle being a nobody to somebody so that God can use you to actually bless anybody with all of who you really are. Oh yeah, you, you, you are able. Oh yeah, if you've been called into the kingdom, if you are a kingdom citizen, there is more in you to give to the kingdom and it is possible. You just have to choose to make it possible. So look, the skull is empty as an indicative symbol that Jesus Christ on this day, carrying the full weight of the sins of the world, would empty himself of his divine blood, thusly covering sins in the past, sins at the present, and sins to come. Now the question is, <laughs> will I use my own skull <laughs> that protects my brain and think about the goodness of Jesus and decide to embrace the work of salvation done on that place of the skull called Calvary. Will we use our own heads? We, we're, our heads not empty. Got blood vessels, able to think, able to decide, able to do. What will you do with the potential that you have, the choice that you have? Let me never look at Calvary as truly a nothing hill. Let me never look at the work 
done by our Lord and Savior Jesus on that hill of the skull as nothing. Verse 23, watch this. And they gave him to drink wine mingled with myrrh. <laughs> but he received it not. Oh, Lord. This is where I would take a walk up and down. Oh, Lord. Huh? Hmm? Watch this again. I need to read it again. 23. And they gave him to drink wine mingled with myrrh, but he received it not. On this nothing hill, watch this, he would take nothing to relieve him of the pangs of sorrow and the pain of the ill treatment of those who hated him. He refused to be comforted. He refused to be comforted then so that I could be comforted today. Hear me, church. Hear me. No matter what we go through, no matter what losses we have, we know that we can yet be comforted. You see, he could have taken the wine mixed with myrrh, and it would have taken the edge off the pain. It would have helped him breathe better, relaxed his muscles, preventing muscle spasms. <laughs> he could have done that, yet if he, my Lord, my Lord, listen, yet if he was going to be touched by the feelings of our infirmities, the feelings of our pain, the feelings of our sorrow, the feelings of our grief, he would have to experience it all in this nothing place, this skull place called Calvary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 24. And when they had crucified him, they parted his garments, casting lots upon them, what every man should take. Hmm. Talking about a nothing hill. They treated, watch this, they treated his clothing as nothing. Yee. Nothing but a material to be played with. Come on up in here. You ever feel like they're just playing with you, playing games with your life, messing with your hair? This is it right here. They were playing, they were gambling with his clothes. They, ne they negotiated the cost of his clothing, not understanding the real price he was paying for their sins. Oh. They're negotiating what the value of his clothing is. He had already completed the negotiations that no matter what the price was, he was going to pay the price so that even they could be forgiven of their sins. Come on now, church. Shabbat Yedor. They, they tore him, teased him, and tempted him. Yet, because he had already, watch this, emptied himself, there was no humanity in him seeking revenge. Park it there, semen. So if we're like Jesus, we ain't supposed to seek revenge. We, we ain't got the get back mentality. We're not going to do people like they did us. Huh? Because Jesus, listen to this, he could have sought revenge. Oh, yes. He could have called 10,000 angels to destroy the world and set him free. He could have called 10,000 angels, but he died alone for you and for me. He died empty. Verses 29 through 32, it reads, And they that passed by railed on him, wagging their heads and saying, Ah, thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days. You know, they're always looking, you know, people always looking for a physical manifestation. They don't understand the spiritual kingdom. Uh, they were looking for a literal temple. They didn't realize Jesus is. He was and he is the temple, huh? Verse 30. Listen to him. Smart, Alex. Listen to him. Save thyself and come down from the cross. Can we just glorify, thank God, that he doesn't have a temple like me? That he doesn't have an attitude like me? I, I want to say, 
Okay, I'm going to borrow these next three, three seconds. Zap, zap, and zap. And then I'll get back on the cross. But no, 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 no. He can't operate like humanity. Got some nerve. Verse 31. Likewise, also the chief priests. No, no, no. See me. You're saying something right there. The word saying. What the word saying? The, the chief priests mocking. Pause it there. Pause it. That's the current church. That's the. That's the government church. <laughs> That's the church of Rome. The church of Rome mocking Jesus. Come on now, hear me. The church at Rome mocking Jesus. You wonder why you got churches today mocking Jesus? Pastor, how are they mocking Jesus? Mocking the word of God because Jesus is the living word. So when the word says this is wrong and they say it's right, they're mocking Jesus. They are crucifying our Lord and our Savior afresh. That's what they're doing. And so it's, it's no surprise. Today, it happened back on that initial Good Friday. Can't be shocked when the church acts the fool. Foolishness. Likewise, also the chief priests mocking. <laughs> that weren't even the normal congregation. That's the, ah. <laughs> mocking said amongst themselves with the scribes. That's the lawyers. The church and the law. Don't stop me today. The church and the law. That, all the lawyers, all the smarty pants think they know. Blind they are. What, what, what they're saying? He saved others. Himself he cannot save. Boy, I'm so glad. Woo! I'm so glad that Jesus stayed. I stayed. Woo! I'm so glad that he, he, he was void of his humanity. Because if he yet had his divinity in him and had an attitude of humanity, he would have dealt with them. But he had already made it. Listen, he had already made it to Calvary and now was void of his humanity, his own ego. That tells me that in order to withstand some things that church people are going to say to me, I've got to be void of my own ego. So that when they call me names, I already say, well, I'm, I'm worse than that. I'm a sinner saved by grace. I'm a person with a desperate, deceitful heart. And if every day I don't wake up to live right, to do right, I'm going to be lost. So go ahead. Call me what you want. Go ahead. Say what you want. Guess what? I'm worse than that. But my God, I thank you for Calvary. Jesus, I thank you that you became nothing so that I could become everything. Jesus, I thank you that you didn't mind being spat upon, being called names, being pierced through your side, being struck through with nails. Oh, all for me, all for me. I can at least take a little bit of name calling. Come on up in here. Hiya. In verse 32, it reads, Let Christ the King of Israel, mocking him, the mocking him, descend now from the cross that we may see and believe. Yeah, that's the problem. They want to see and believe. We believe before we see because we know that in eternity we're going to see it all anyway. So I don't have to see it right now. I, I believe I'm a king's kid. I walk by faith and not by sight. Come on. And they that were crucified with him reviled him. So you got the two thieves acting the fool. Probably thinking they can get a break. Maybe if I agree with these soldiers and these crazy people, they'll, they'll ease me up. Give me some myrrh. Church, to not respond when you are being purposely provoked, harshly handled, and blatantly belittled, this is when you know that you are empty of you and that you have nothing and that nothing of this earth will harm you. I'm telling you, in the year 2020, I'm going to keep on saying it. I, I believe it, that we need the church to empty. Hey, I'm talking about emptying the building. I'm talking about you and I emptying ourselves of ourselves. Why? So that we can actually be uh, in tune with God's spirit and we can be in alignment with God's will. That's what I'm talking about. And church, this takes me to my final point of the day. Seems like I only just began. I've been preaching five minutes. My Lord. Final point of the day. Point three. Nothing hell. H. 
H-A-I-L. Nothing hail. Listen, verse 33. And when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. The Bible tells us in this verse, verse 33, <laughs> there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. This tells you and me <laughs> that the earth, watch this, was emptied of light. Why? Because Jesus, the light of the world, was empty. <laughs> the earth could not shine forth. The earth could not reveal. The earth became symptomatic of the fact that the light of the world was leaving the world. Shout out out of Moshe Peter. That tells me, my brothers and my sisters, that when we depart this earth, it ought to be a little bit darker. Just for a minute, you better go ahead and grieve. You better go ahead and mourn, my God. Because in your grieving, in your mourning, you absolutely confess that the one who has just left was a light of the world. And your world just got a little bit darker. And you've got to wait now for the light of God, for the glorious light of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to shine a bit brighter for you. And you've got to do what I've got to say. God, take me through. God, hold me up. God, shine forth. God, strengthen me at this time. God, be my fortress. Be my rock. Be my stay. Light up my life. Shout out, oh, 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 shake it. Light up my life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. The earth. The earth had a flashback to when God spoke it forth in Genesis. And now there is a manifestation of the light being emptied of light. Jesus is emptied of light so that the earth had to react in an appropriate manner. That tells me, and it's happening even today, that when mankind stop messing with the earth, the earth bounces back. The earth will absolutely respond to the spirit that is in the world. And on this day is an example, the original example of the earth saying, what? My Lord and Master is now darkening and leaving this world? Now I get darker. My God, my God. Do you hear me, church? So, as it were, the earth light bowed its head in humble submission to the light of the world. My God, the light of the earth, here it is, mourned, mourned the loss of the essence of that which called it into being. <laughs> you got to see it. You wonder why it was an earthquake? You wonder why the earth split in two? It was in grief. It was screaming in pain. It was like the earth was saying, my heart is broken. <laughs> Let me tell you that without Jesus in your life, your earth is darker. Your world is darker. Let me go to verse 34. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eloi, Eloi, Lemai, Sabathani, which being interpreted, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? There it is. There it is. By his own words, Jesus is saying that he is empty. He is empty. For any time your father forsakes you, there is an emptiness that cannot be explained or replaced by others. Forsaken, it comes from the Greek word lipo. It means to abandon, desert, leave in straits, leave helpless, totally abandoned, utterly forsaken. Church, forsaken because he was empty of righteousness. Remember, don't forget, at this point, he is taking on every sin, sickness, disease that ever was, ever is, and ever shall be. 
So he is now empty of righteousness, forsaken because he was full of sin, forsaken because he was no longer worthy to be in the presence of his father, God. He was no longer worthy. What? Because of my sin, because of your sin, he, he was no longer worthy to be in the presence of God. He was rejected by his father, God, in order that we would be accepted by his father, God. He carried our sins to the grave so that we would not have to go to our graves full of sin. My God, my God. Oh, I hope you're getting it. Verses 36 and 37. And one ran, right, one ran, and filled a sponge full of vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink, saying, let us learn, let us see whether Elias will come to take him down. And Jesus cried with a loud voice and gave up the ghost. <laughs> you talk about strong finish? Come on, huh? What? Oh, Lord. All right, all right. Let me, let me read it right here. In study, I found out that, listen, vinegar and water has been a refreshing drink from the time of Roman soldiers to give to the athletes who drank it to slack or remove, take away their thirst. So, so this could mess you up if you don't follow it. They wanted to take away his thirst. Now, why would they want to do that? Let, let's talk about it. I want you to note <laughs> that this means the soldiers were aiming to take away his thirst and thereby, here it is, extend his life to do what? Extend his pain. Huh? They wanted Jesus to experience more pain, so they wanted to give him the vinegar. They gave him the vinegar and water so that he would live some more, so that they could crucify him some more, they could hurt him some more, they could just rip at him some more. In other words, they wanted him around longer so that they could debase him some more. Yet, what I want you to understand is that be <laughs> before they could do this, Prolong his life. Jesus gives up the ghost. You think Jesus is going to let them dictate how long he's going to hang on the cross? You think Jesus is going to give them credit of extending his life? No, no, no. He's the one that said, my life, I lay it down. I decide to lay it down. Ain't no soldier's going to decide to lay it down. Ain't no hater's going to decide to lay it down. I lay it down of myself. And guess what? I lay it down. I'm that powerful. I decide when it gets laid down. And I'm so big, bad. I'm that powerful <laughs> that I am the one I'll, I'll take my life back up. Uh-huh. And, and so what I want you to understand is that before they prolonged his life, before they could do that, Jesus gives up the ghost. Jesus commits to death. He, he's the only one that committed himself to death. I, I got to commit people to the grave. He said, no, 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 I'm doing this one. Uh, we is ready, grave, because I got a work to do. My Lord, my Lord, I could preach on that. Call me back, I'll preach on that one. In other words, now here's, here's a big point. Oh, Lord. Here, catch this, church, catch this. Here, listen, listen, listen. This, this is going to be so sweet. In other words, Jesus died thirsty. Jesus died thirsty. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want you to miss important insight right here. He died thirsty because Jesus wants us to be thirsty. Mm -hmm. you, you've got to be thirsty in order to enter into the kingdom. You've got to be thirsty in order to decide um, this world, it doesn't quench me. This world no longer satisfies me. Uh, what I used to do, um, it doesn't satisfy me no more. No drinking, no smoking, no drugging, no sexing, no sexting, no texting. All that, no, none of that satisfies me. I'm thirsty, God. I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. And when the world is thirsty, guess what? They're going to seek the living waters. Yeah, 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 yeah. He wants us thirsty, thirsty for living water. That's thirsty for him, thirsty for righteousness. That's thirsty after his ways. 
my, 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 my. Whatever they tried to do, understand this, that Jesus was in charge of the moment. Ah, Jesus was in charge of this moment. He had the original charge from his father, and he's in charge of the moment. Church, I want you to remain thirsty. I, uh, if there's one thought that's really prevailing, I need my people to remain thirsty. What Did you wake up every time and we're together, together? I'm thirsty. I, I need to experience Jesus. Like the deer panted after the water brooks, so my soul longeth after you. I am thirsty for the presence of God. Let me read verse 38. And the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. On that day, a church program, the liturgical calendar, the pomp and circumstances of the church was revealed to no longer be needed. Now, I didn't say we're going to be untidy. I just said all the religious stuff, you know, that the Roman Catholic, did I say Roman Catholic? The Roman church back in his day was doing, the ones that crucified him. He said, no, no, rip that thing away. You know, it's like taking a piece of paper and just rip. You, know, you ain't got to read it. Put any trash. Have mercy. Have mercy. It was now emptied. Watch this. Emptied of veiled tradition. The veiled traditions of mankind. And full of the grace and glory of Jesus Christ. Verse 39, and when the centurion which stood over against him saw that he so cried out and gave up the ghost, he said, truly, this man was the son of God. Yeah, yeah, he knew what the norm was. He knew what would happen with every human body. He knew how long that they would usually hang on that uh, piece of wood. He knew all the statistics. They had all the statistics. They had all the data. They had all the information. Yet they could not apply that to Jesus. That's why no matter, no matter, no matter what, I cannot stop at what men are saying. I cannot stop at the conclusion of mankind. I believe in Jesus. And so until Jesus says it's over, we're still just beginning. Let's look here. Jesus, this is street you all remember. Remember this. Jesus should have cried out in a whimper. In a whimper. No energy. No strength. No might. This is what they thought. He's weak. We got him. Huh? He's a nobody. <laughs> he should have cried out in a whimper. That's what they thought. He should have cried softly. Yet at the point of death, he took on a stance of victory. Hey. And he cried out in a loud voice. What? He cried out in victory. Yes, he did. Why? Because now... He was nothing. He was empty of humanity. And this means, watch this, this is amazing. He is now completely full of divinity. He has now emptied himself of humanity. Totally, <laughs> totally emptied himself. And so while they thought it was over, he was like, ah, I'm now full of divinity. Because I did, shamano, because the work that my father gave me to give, I just completed it. And therefore, when... You know how when you finish a course, when you finish college, you get a certificate, it proves that you did the work? Well, when he completely died for sin, huh? when he knew that it was finished, he had done the work, he then gets his certificate of full divinity back. And one more time, he dies with all power. He dies with all power because he's going to resurrect with all power. Come on, church. I love it. The nothingness of this day, the nothingness of Jesus had to happen. He had to go through this so that another day would happen. It's Friday now, but Sunday is coming. Lord have mercy. It, it's dark now, but a brighter day is coming. One day, whew, yeah, I'm all say here. One day, church, we shall see God. Because of this day, when God refused to see his son. Church, this day had to happen so that another day in the future, we know what will happen. As I wind down here, direct again on the keyboard. <laughs> because Jesus got up full of power. One day, you and I will get up 
full of power because Jesus got up full of power. One day, our sister Julie Durant will get up full of power. Yes, leave this world powerless and wake up in another world full of power. We will leave this earth with nothing and wake up in eternity with everything. So Good Friday, we celebrate that our Savior, Jesus Christ, he hung, bled, and died so that he could introduce us to eternity. So thank you, Jesus, for Good Friday. Thank you, my Lord, for Good Friday. Thank you, God, for arranging Good Friday. Holy Spirit, thank you, Comforter, for Good Friday that Jesus hung, bled, and died so that he could introduce you, introduce me to eternity. So thank you, Jesus. Yeah, thank you, Jesus, for now we have everlasting hope for an everlasting tomorrow. Church, it's not over. It's not over. Sunday morning is coming. I don't know what day of the week that Jesus Christ shall linger over earth and we shall be caught up. It might be a Monday. It might be a Tuesday or Wednesday. It might be a Thursday or Friday. It might be a Saturday. It might be a Sunday. I'm here to tell you that spiritually speaking, it's going to be the third day when Jesus comes back for his church. It will be a Sunday. So in spite of the Friday, in spite of the darkness of today, I'm telling you, church, Sunday mornings, it's going to come. Sunday morning is going to come. So be encouraged today and understand of a truth that Jesus, he became nothing to become our everything. He became nothing to become our everything. I, I don't know who's tuned in via Facebook and YouTube. But if you don't know this nothing of a savior, who is everything of a savior, you need to make your choice today. He gave himself. Don't let him have given his life in your case for nothing. Choose him today. What a day to choose the Lord as your savior. The day that we commemorate that he took upon himself our sins, our griefs. And so if you're watching and you don't know the Lord Jesus as your savior, I invite you to make him your Lord and savior today. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna lead you in a prayer, a prayer of repentance so that you can look forward to that day of eternity when the sun, we won't even need the natural sun because the original sun, Jesus, he will light up that kingdom. Oh, he will light up heaven. I don't even know what will this light look like. They talk about it's got emeralds around the throne. What? What kind of sight is this? I got to see it for myself. That's why I live by faith. So I want to invite you, I want to invite you to accept Jesus into your heart. If you're a sinner, you want to do so, repeat after me. Dear Lord, I come to you today. I confess that I am a sinner. God, today, I make the choice to ask you to forgive me of my sins. I accept the work that Jesus did on Calvary's hill. I believe that Jesus died for me. God, today, I ask Jesus to come into my heart and I confess him today as my Lord and Savior. God, I thank you that I am now a part of the family of God. God, I give my life to you and I trust you to lead me in this life's journey. Thank you for new life. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone says amen, amen. Well, I just hope that somebody made that decision today, and it's the best decision that you could have made. Um, it's a decision 
that guarantees that should you now decide, I'm going to go in church, be in a Bible-believing church, a teaching church that teaches the Word of God, that you now will see Jesus for yourself. You'll see your loved ones. We'll see our sister Julie and so many that have gone on before, and we'll be able to rejoice with them. And so, you know, weeping may endure for a night, but there's a morning time that's coming. It's going to be a morning time, and it's going to be so filled with joy. If you made that decision to accept Jesus Christ into your life, I pray that you will reach out to me, let me know, and certainly if you are in the island of Bermuda, I would love to be your pastor. I look forward to being your pastor. You can email me at swim at logic.bm. One of my members is going to type it in right now. Swim at logic.bm. Let me know the decision you made. Uh, we can have a conversation. We can talk. And listen, the Bible never said anything about coming perfect. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I still am not there. And I actually won't get there until time turns into eternity. What I will do is study God's word and do my utmost best to live a life that's pleasing to God. Therefore, I'm walking in righteousness until I get to meet him for myself. So if you did that, God bless you. Welcome to the family of God. This is pretty exciting, folks. And just know, God is a keeper. He's kept me for over 45 years in the kingdom. I am a witness, and I got so many who are a witness. All right, so God bless you. I'm going to have the closing prayer, and then you can enjoy your, what is it, fish cakes and hot cross buns and stuff like that, all right? But before that, let's pray. Father God, we do thank you. God, thank you for today. Thank you, God, for your son Jesus Christ and the work that he did. Thank you, God, that by faith, we have received and believed, and because of that, by faith, we shall see Jesus for ourselves. God, I thank you for every listener, every viewer, every person that took out a minute, a moment of their time to tune in. God, I pray that something that I said today, based on your word, is a blessing and will continue to bless them. Open up your word to them. Give them understanding so that they will grow in you. God, again, I thank you for certainly the members of Shekinah Worship Center. I pray your blessings upon them. God, I can't stop here. I've got to certainly remember Bermuda at this time, our premier, the Honorable David Burks, and those that work diligently alongside of him. We pray for the government and even the governor. God, I pray that you give them insight and wisdom. And then, God, at another level, God, we speak prayer and not panic. We speak faith and not fear or fright. And God, I pray that you will calm the nerves of Bermudians. My God, that you will strengthen them from the inside. God, that you will give us a confidence in you. God, that as we obey this shelter in place, that you're still in the place. Hallelujah. And that you're still granting us favor, all sorts of favors we, we don't even know about. So thank you for that. I thank you for my mom and dad and sustaining mom. Could have been another story. Thank you for my sister, who for the first Good Friday is a Christian, has given her heart to the Lord. God, I thank you for everything. And God, I can't help it but say again, thank you for the gift that you gave us in our sister, Julie Durant, our most precious person and a friend. And I pray that you'll continue to strengthen her family, our elder Durant and our director Ryan, and that you'll continue to have us to show how we come through with victory, how the mourning and the grief yet yields the light of victory. So God, we give you all praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone says, amen. Amen. Thank you for tuning in. Be blessed continually, and certainly know how much I love you, Shekinah Worship Center and friends, and you know what I'm saying. Blessings abound. Love you.